Hello everybody, I'm Rusty. I want to welcome you to Island Breeze Tropicals. So today we're going to learn how to grow bromeliads inside a terrarium. So you know what? The sun is shining, the island breeze is blowing, it's time that you and I got growing. Come on, let's have some fun. Let's make a terrarium with bromeliads in it. Before we begin, if this is your first time here, welcome. And if you like what you see, I hope you'll hit the like button down below. I hope that you'll become a member of our Vermilliad family and become a subscriber. Thanks a lot. So now, why don't we get to our video? So I want to show you what we're going to be using today. Now this has an open front. Um, you, I guess you'd call this an aquarium, but it's not really an aquarium. Uh, this is a glass enclosure, and the reason that I want to use this is that it makes it easy for me to show you without glare right here. You can use an aquarium if you want to. I just so happen to have this enclosure, and it works really, really well. Now, you can use an aquarium any size that you want to. If you want to start out small, a 10-gallon would be perfect and very, very manageable. You just have to size down from what we have here. So, you can see that this background is black. Now, all I did was mask the sides. I used an ordinary black spray paint, and that makes it so that you can see what we're doing back here. And I also like the look. I don't really want to look in back of the enclosure. So I'm sorry for the noise. You can hear some much needed rain uh, down here in southwest Florida today. So okay, let's really start our build. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I think I want to do with this so that I can grow bromeliads in here. And this is a piece of African Mopani wood. And I want this for the background. So African Mopani wood is very dense and as such it is very rot resistant. And it's got some beautiful pattern and that's what we want. We want this to look good. And this has got, I think, a lot of nice shapes on it and it will make it look uh, pretty cool uh, when we put plants in there. But we're not finished. Hold on. Okay, so I've practiced this a little bit. And we'll see whether or not I can get this to go in the way that I want. And I don't think that's it. Let's see what this does. Okay. So now I put another piece of driftwood in. I'm going to put it on the outside here so you can see it. And all I'm going to do is lay it in here. Now, you'll see later on in the shots that it's um, coming up here and it's above uh, the enclosure, but we'll deal with that later. And we're going to be mounting our bromeliads on here along with some other plants. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to put some, some other features in here. So I'm going to put just some rock that I had in an old aquarium. Don't get hung up on what I'm doing because we all have uh, different ways of doing things. But maybe you can see those rocks in there. And all it is is to give it some degree of visual interest. Okay, so we have the rocks in there. And now I'm going to put some gravel in. We want something in the foreground. And I'm just going to dump it right in there. And now I'm out of the way, finally. And what we're going to do is just move this gravel around so that it's not just glass there. And we may need a little bit more. And so all this is doing is making a nice stage for, for your bromeliads. Okay, so we have a rough um, floor in there, and it's not perfect. I'm going to take and brush some of it around, but not here on camera. 
and you can see the wood right there so we've got one more thing that I want to do just to dress it up a little bit remember you're going to have this inside your house someplace and uh, you want it to look nice now again don't get really hung up on what I've done here you know part of the creative process is that you get to invent and that's what I like about it and that's why this is so much fun so one more thing and then we'll get to the bromeliads I promise and I just thought it would be kind of neat if I put some background greenery in there and this is just a type of um, moss I think it's called mountain moss just enough to give it some interest in there and maybe something in the foreground of that wood. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. Maybe some right, right here. Okay, so now we have uh, everything set. And now, as I promised you, um, we're going to start installing some bromeliads in there. Okay, so now we have some bromeliads, and, um, and you can see that these are all minis, and they all have some color to them, and I'm not really sure where I want to put the color. I've got some red, and I've got orange right here, as you can see, and then I've got that nice little bromeliad right there. And um, I think I want to put this bromeliad right here let's see if it'll work any better backwards now I want it like this and we're going to put it right like that and I am going to tie this in and I'm going to be using um, the zip ties right here now you're not going to leave the zip ties on there uh, after this attaches then I'm going to take the zip ties off so this might be like watching paint dry, guys, but I'm going to try and get this on here uh, on camera. And let's see if this works. And I'm getting the first zip tie in there. And as usual, I am all thumbs. We got this one in. And just about where I want it. Now you want... You want the cup, as usual, to be straight up and down. You want water in the cup. I'm going to put another one here. By the way, we have a video on mini bromeliads, how to mount bromeliads on a piece of hanging wood, and also how to uh, install bromeliads in a tree. And all of that will help you uh, with this install. Now again, I'm trying to get that right straight up there. I think I'm going to put another one on. not going to bore you with that, and we'll move on. So this gives a good idea as to what we're doing here. Now, you can see that along the main stem off to the right, I have two small zip ties. And then you can see I've got a zip tie right here. This is a pup here, and eventually that's going to grow up, start collecting water too. And so I anchored it right there, so you're going to have an attachment point here and an attachment point here. All right, so I brought one more with me. And if you can see this, what I'm going to show you is you know, what we're doing is trying to match the bromeliad that we have with the architecture that we have in here. And as you can see, this bromeliad, this is Fireball. It's a Neo Regelia. And as you can see, it has a pup. But take a look how steep that angle is. And I think that would go, look, it almost, it almost mounts itself. So that's how I'm arranging. Now, Again, guys, this is up to you. You are the artist and also the bromeliad grower. So I'm going to tell you how to grow the bromeliads, but you need to do the artwork uh, yourself because that's what's going to make you really, really happy. Okay, so just like our first bromeliad, I'm going to mount this one. 
Again, I'm going to run the zip tie around and the plant's going to move on me. I might have to use two zip ties. Okay, as it turns out, I have to use two zip ties. So we're going to trim these up later. And that's where I've got the plant. And we're just going to tighten that up like that. Now that's not the only zip tie that we're going to put in. I'm going to put one down here again. I'm not going to bore you with that. But if you can see the roots down here, um, that is going to attach and up here is going to attach. And as soon as that happens, then you can substitute uh, monofilament, which is fishing line, um, for your zip ties and, uh, and your plants won't go anywhere. Okay, so we've got another couple of zip ties. I'm going to put those down around the base. And I'm going to snug that in. Make sure that we get it on the stem. I know, my hands are in the way. But that gives you, I think, a really good idea as to where we're going with this. You know what? I think I want one more bromeliad. So I want to put these two bromeliads in the background. I'm going to show you, see if we can get it in the frame. I want to put it back here and another one back there. But I want these to be mounted into um, their own little pots. I'm going to show you what that is. And that will make it so that you can take these out and they'll root in it. And they'll also be above the floor of this in case you want to put some water in there for some humidity uh, you don't want these guys to have their meristems in water and um, so you want them to be able to be above that so i'm going to be putting them in a little net cup like this this is used for hydroponics so what we're going to do is i'm going to uh, mount this in the net cup and I'll show you how that's done in just a sec. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the bromeliad and I'm going to put it in the neck cup, but we need some substrate. So I'm going to use LECA, which is a clay pebble. It's a type of substrate that you use in hydroponics. And I'm just going to put that in there like that. And I'm just going to work the bromeliad in there, but I want to attach this. I'm not going to do that on camera. I'm going to go off camera and I'll bring it back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so you can see the, the LECA that I've used in there. And um, I have a zip tie. Now what I've done is I have um, put the zip tie through the mesh of the cup. Okay, so you can see the, the zip tie and it goes through, goes through the mesh on the bottom and then goes up around and maybe you can see the pup coming out and so it's going around that stem and that's what's holding that. So we want two of these for the background um, and I'm going to do the other one again off camera so it's not too boring and then we're going to put them in the terrarium. Okay guys so this is where I want to put one of the bromeliads and um, this is in the background and all we're going to do is wedge that into the space in back kind of like that let's see how does that look okay so we're wedging that in between the wood and the back of the aquarium and we're going to wedge it in like that and we're going to do the same thing on the other side and we've wedged in uh, the other bromeliad that we tied and all that is is just placed uh, in back of our piece of Mopani wood and it's not sitting on the bottom of the aquarium and this is our second background bromeliad you can see the leca in the mesh cup and the mesh cup again it's just wedged in there you don't need to attach it once you get your 
terrarium in place. It's an easy matter of using the weight of the wood and the back of the terrarium. And you can see we have our background. So this doesn't look all that nice, does it? And I don't want to see the neck cup. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to do, try and do this with one hand. All I'm going to do is take some of this mountain moss and just hide the neck cup with it. Now the mountain moss is not going to be soaking sopping wet. You don't want that at the meristem of the plant. I don't think that that's going to be a problem. And it, all that does is hide uh, the neck cup. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And this is the other side and uh, you wouldn't be able to see me do it anyway. My arm would be in the way. And you can see that that is hidden. And that gives us a nice background. So we only have a couple more things to do. Now I think the wonderful thing about a project like this is that even though we're doing this with bromeliads, we're not limited to just using bromeliads and I think that they go very, very well uh, with other plants and in this case I have an aeroid and it is called Pearls and Jade Pothos. And it really has some nice coloration to it, especially with that dark background. And I think that it actually brings out some of the color in our bromeliads in the foreground. What do you think with that black and the white and green and then the red of our bromeliad? Take a look. Isn't that beautiful? And all the uh, pothos is growing in is sphagnum moss and, um, and it grows really, really nice in that. It maintains a little bit more moisture, it won't have any dirt in the terrarium and it's got some nice foliage and I think it's a nice addition. So we have one last thing and I've just installed it and it's a little hard to see so I'm going to get uh, in back of the terrarium and I'm going to move it around but remember that this is growing inside and our bromeliads are in an enclosed space probably away from a window and they are going to need light in order to maintain their color and also carry on photosynthesis. Okay, this is a little better view of the light. You can see that they're very linear and they are on stalks that you can bend and you can adjust them as you want to over top of your plants. Um, they are quite bright. Hold on just a second. Let me turn these guys on. And I don't know what's going to happen with glare, but as you can see, look at this. They're quite bright and I can arrange these any way that I want to. Now I'm not really happy with the stalk idea. I would much rather have a pendant. Guys, there's tons of different grow lights with different intensities. All I can tell you is go ahead and get some, play with them. The important thing is that we add enough light so that our bromeliads maintain their color and carry on photosynthesis. So anyway, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed uh, this construction process so that we can have our bromeliads inside if we want and have our own little section of jungle. Now, just a reminder for all of our friends who do not live in the subtropics, we're going to have a lot more content for you about how you can grow bromeliads inside and not just in a terrarium. So no matter where you are, I hope your sun is shining. I hope you have an island breeze blowing. I know that you need to keep growing, have lots of fun. Thanks for stopping by, 
and we'll see you next time.